So now we have a D16Z6 or a JDM D15B P08 head port work for you guys. As we all know, we already have the usual, the B16 PR3 head, even the RBB K24 head, and also K28 PRB head, and of course the VDI. And the, this one will be really good in its own right because it has a dyno run of a stock head, and then of course a ported head by us, dyno and the guys tried to max out their setup. So hey, you know, this one is just right for you. Now here is the D16Z6 or JDM D15B P08 head casting in stock form. As you can see, it's ready to get ported and become a lot better flowing head. Yep, those are stock and now the exhaust. We will talk about this a little later. We have a certain approach on a specific D sock VTEC heads. And it's a lot different from the usual stuff, so we're gonna talk about that a little later. So now let's go to the porting bench. Let's go, let's go. And I usually do this. Sometimes I make a pass or a light pass with the 80 grit just so it shows me how the core shift is because every head has a different core shift or a different style of shifting that you gotta fix. And so I'll make a light pass with the 80 grit before going with the carbide. This way it shows me where I should move some material or change the shape, right? Okay, now let's go with the carbide. Here we go, and now the shaping begins. So it's a lot different on the, on a D16Z6 or sock heads because they don't naturally have over or too much port volume. So you can actually shape this to make good RPM range or RPM power. So, you know, you gotta shape it properly. Unlike, let's say a PR3 that's already too big, you gotta be careful with that. So now, let's go to the exhaust this time. And as I mentioned earlier, it's a little bit tricky on the exhaust. At, at least this is our approach. Because when you think about it, a SOC VTEC does not have any VTEC on the exhaust. So you gotta port this to make it flow efficiently, enough airspeed to have good response and torque before VTEC or, the, or at the low cam. But at the same time, do not limit it so that you know you don't have VTEC being limited by the RPMs because you know as the VTEC kicks in, yo, sorry, if the exhaust is not flowing efficiently, you'll start to kill power or lower your peak power. So you gotta do it both ways. This way you get an efficient performing engine. All right, now here we go. This is the shape, the initial shaping actually. So yep, now let's wash this head and go back to the workbench and show you guys. And now here we are with the initial shaping done. We still have got a long ways to go. So hey, we're just showing you the steps of what we do. And here, let's look at it closer, all right? Here you can see, we haven't really touched the bowl because, you know, we don't want it to get too big and kill torque. So we're just trying to get the casting flash or the core shift a little good or a little concentric, accurate. And let's go to the exhaust. Here's the before and now it's ongoing with the carbide. So there's stock form and then the carbide. We didn't decide to go with the 50 grit here because there's also already carbon buildup. So that was easy to trace and start working and getting the core shift really good. So now let's go back to the workbench and continue further. All right, now here with the exhaust bowls, we go with the bowls first, which is the, we're gonna use an 80 grit just for the shaping, just for, to show us where we are. So we're gonna show that later. I'll go time-lapse so this is faster. We use 80 grit because it gives us a roughing that we can actually inspect before we go further. And we're, after the initial stage, we're gonna clean it up and show you guys on the workbench again. All right, while well, we're almost done with the exhaust bowls, now we move to the intake bowl. All right, there you go. Okay, it grit first, and then we start shaping it to get the contours right. And of course, we're gonna time lapse. And later, as soon as we get done with the initial sanding roll phase, 
we're gonna clean this head up and show you guys on the workbench where we're heading to or you know the current status before the final finish all right there you go okay now we gotta tilt the head again all right since the head is inverted this is actually the roof that we're, we're, we are working on sorry sorry so you know it seems like it's the floor but it's actually the roof so we're gonna keep shaping this so that we can show you better once we clean it up all right so it's 80 grit of course keep going yeah we're starting to feel and get the shape of course we've got a time lapse and see now we're trying to get the transition from from the valve guide area outward it has to be really good and efficient or at least streamlined this way, you have to understand that it has to flow good in the low cam and of course flow good enough on the high cam. Here it is, you can see it's almost there, it's not yet there, but almost. All right, now there, trying to blow it just to show you guys. Okay, there, be careful, don't inhale the aluminum dust particles. All right, so now we invert it once again. Now we will actually do the exhaust port floors. There you go, all right. Okay, now we go to the intake. So now it's the intake port roof. All right, we start getting the shape done because we've already started with the carbide, so now it's gonna be faster. Of course, we go time-lapse, yeah. Yep, and that's gonna be good now. And a little later, we will show you, it was an unexpected back-to-back -back dyno because as soon as the owners got the PO8 D15B head that we ported, what they did was they down dynoed their current setup on stock head and then installed the head that we ported and then checked the dyno again. You can see here, that is the current state of the ports. As you can see, the bowl is blended, but still roughly, you can see, let me focus it closer. You can see the bowl is still rough, right? But we're getting to the shape that we're shooting for or that we want, right? And you can see we've actually slightly equalized the core shift. And later on, you'll see it has gotten better, all right? Now we wash this up to go to the workbench and show you guys better. Let's go, let's go. And as you notice, during the porting stage, the head gets cleaned up several times. So now here on the workbench, yep, here's the current state. It's still rough, of course, all 80 grit, including the exhaust, but the shape is getting there. All right, now let's look at it closer. There you go. You can see the shape is getting to where we want it. And the places untouched are the core shift, so we, we don't touch those. Now let's head to the exhaust. Let's go, let's go. Oh yes, sir. Look at that. The exhaust is actually starting to look really good, but that's because initially all we saw was carbon buildup. So now it's good, looking good. Yep. And remember, the exhaust ports has to function in the low cam and also when it's in VTEC because it's only the intake that has VTEC on this SOC VTEC setup, right? So hey, we gotta remember that, but we can't hug it out. So now let's go back to the porting bench and continue to get the shape that we need. And there's still 80 grit on the intake. So you know, that is actually what we stay with on the intake, even after doing the finishing touches, because we can get the right texture that we're shooting for or that we want with the 80 grit. On the exhaust, however, we sometimes stick with 80 grit depending on the lubricant, but there are times that we go all the way to 120 grit. And this time we will actually go with 120 grit to show you guys how the results will be. All right, it will be really good. Yep, and now we go with the exhaust. Yes, there you go. And it's still the exhaust roof. We're trying to get all the sidewalls contoured properly. Uh, removing, you know, removing the actual core shift. Yep. Because we have to make this efficient because, hey, it functions the, on the low cam and the high cam. And now we go to the bowls. Yes, that's the exhaust bowl. Because, you know, we got to start checking this, getting to the finish that we need to or we want to. Yep. It's still 80 grit, by the way. And then later on, we're going to jump to 120 grit. Yep. Okay. Get the bowls done. So it's going to be good. Yes, sir. 
okay now let me show you how it sits as of now well 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 it's getting there it's getting there as you can see it's starting to look really good right and this head roughly needs about five more hours on the intake and exhaust so we're gonna keep doing that and a few hours later we're gonna show you after it's washed up and cleaned up of course all right and let me mention this for now on this part here you can see the gasket is offset a bit and we didn't need to ink this up to see where we're going because it's there but even on the exhaust some heads once we clean it up before porting it gets removed so we gotta put ink on the exhaust and die came on the intake just to let us visualize where we're going and for us not to go overboard just in case everyone anyone is wondering about that you know because some people might think it's useless but if you don't know then you don't know so here's the head it's all done you can see because we ink we inked it up because we got a part match it later here's the intake port you can see how we didn't really hug it out but you see on the left side or the right side the core shift is different there's more and less right so here we fix the short turn the sidewalls even the bow here you can see the divider is done really well yep and as some of you may wonder, on the injector bosses or the injector boss of the intake ports, we rough this area out because when you think about it, the flow path is just in the ports, right? This indentation is for, to give space for the injectors. So what we're trying to do here by get, getting it rough is to actually recharge the flow attachments. So this is what we do. And of course, I sometimes actually do a carbide finish on my own heads, but most of the time it's just like this. So here's a good look of the finished intake ports. Yep, looking really good. And here are the still shots. Yep. And now we head on to the exhaust. Yes, sir. Now we inked it up with red so we can, you know, check it out a little later during assembly. All right, there you go. Now let's look close into the exhaust ports itself. And remember, I did mention this exhaust port has to work with the low cam on the intake and the high cam on the intake itself because the exhaust is not VTEC on single overhead cams. So this is how we do it to make it as efficient as possible on the low cam to maintain good airspeed, but at the same time, do not choke up the power making factor above RPM or above v VTEC RPMs. Yeah, it looks really good, right? And now here's the still shots of the finished head on the exhaust side. There you go. Yep, it's looking really good. And we're gonna be assembling this for a D16 ZC project. So you know you gotta look for that. But before that, let me talk about this, the dyno sheets. We did this kind of work back in 2016 or 17 for the folks, for the guys in Austria. And you know, it was really good because we didn't know they would dyno the, their current turbo setup on the stock head. And then once installed our ported head, re-dyno again. So hey, that was really cool and unexpected. So here it is on 1.8 bar boost or 26 PSI, they made 400 wheel horsepower. And they, they tried a little bit higher, but as they increased the boost, the returning power was not as big. So they knew it was maxed out. And also this is running on DSM 440 CCs. I know I've mentioned before that it was running ID 1000s, but it was DSM 440 CC. So next thing they did was slap on the ported head that we did and guess what they made are you ready for this here on the same 1.8 bar boost which is 26 psi they got 497 wheel horsepower that's 97 wheel horsepower difference from the stock head from 400 right that's crazy. What's even more crazy is that their DSM 440cc and Walbro pump is starting to run out. So hey, that means it's flowing, right? And so naturally, as enthusiast and the owner is a tuner himself, what he decided was to order some ID 2000s and a Bosch fuel pump. That's crazy, right? Hey, you can never be overkill when it comes to the fueling system on a turbo setup. So you know what? Guess what it made? 
oh, it's crazy because they were coming from 400 meters horsepower power and then they jumped to 497, right? So here it is. Now with more boost allowed at 2.5 bar or 36 PSI, there. 557 wheel horsepower. That's crazy, right? And you know, that is a fun little engine, right? And that's what you get with a good flowing head. So why stick to stock ports, right? I mean, look at this. They came from 400 wheel horsepower on stock head, and then the ported head was 497, but running out of fuel, and then managing all the fueling good is 5. 57 wheel horsepower. That's a good jump. But this head that we're doing right now is going to a D16 ZC street and track project. And so you gotta subscribe to keep track of that, right? As soon as we finish that video, you know what's up. It's gonna be okay to click it here.